Good morning, everybody. Silas here today. We're off on another adventure. It is absolutely ba beautiful out here today. The heat wave is finally gone. They're talking a high of only 87 degrees today. That is so much better than the 105, 10, 15 degrees we were having last week. I'll take this any day of the week. But we do have a lot of work to get done this week, so let's just get right into it. I have a guy coming on Wednesday to get the cab and front clip off of this truck, as well as the truck up front that's full of airplane parts. This in here should be pretty easy. I've done these before. Uh, they're not too complicated to get these old cabs pulled off of these late 40s, early 50s Ford trucks. In addition to that, I believe Terry is coming out later in the week. He wants the cab and front clip off of this truck, as well as that 8.3 uh, liter. I think it was an 8.3 liter out of that old prison bus. But my first objective is this truck right here. Now the back of it is clear full of stuff. Uh, I'm not going to clean the back of it out. I'm going to try to just go ahead and get the bed cut off of it. That way I can just take the whole thing off, set it aside. The cab is clear full of stuff as well, and I do need to get that cleaned out. There's all sorts of stuff from the auction where I bought this truck in here still. Bunches of airplane parts, just miscellaneous stuff, bunch of, I think, magnetos over there. We'll kind of look through it a little bit, see what all we can find. These trucks aren't too bad to pull the sheet metal off of either. I've done these a few times before. Let's see what all's in here. Oh, I forgot about this, an old Chevy truck mirror. Bunches of airplane parts in here. I'm not even sure what some of this stuff is. I'm guessing that's some sort of radio antenna receiver or something. I don't really know what that is. Bunch of good magnetos in this box right here. Yeah, bunches of stuff in here. So I'm gonna get all that cleaned out uh, for now, just because it's all kind of bulky. I'm just gonna take it and I'll probably just throw it in the semi-trailer right inside the door. A lot of it's just gonna be scrap aluminum. So as I go through it later, some stuff like this is valuable. This is valuable. This is a pretty neat piece here, but at the auction, when I would buy something like this, it would be in a pile with all this other stuff. And so I had to just buy it all and I wasn't gonna leave stuff behind. So I just went ahead and took it all. The uh, magnetos I'll probably go ahead and throw in the other storage containers cause I can put those on the shelf. I know I'm keeping all of those. So I'll just kind of go through this, get it cleaned out and then I'll get out the rack, set this up in the air and then I'll set it down on there and get to cutting. This truck is a 1947 Ford. I bought this at an auction just north of town. It was an auction mainly dedicated to airplanes. Uh, you can go back through my videos and you can see that video. I did it, oh, probably midsummer or so. This truck is one of the nicest jail bar Ford trucks I've ever seen. I don't know why nobody else bid, but I got this truck for 400 or $450, something like that. It was just dirt cheap, I'm not gonna lie. The buyer of this truck is from up by Chicago. Up in that area, everything rusts to nothing. So this truck here being as clean as it is, is a very rare example for him. So he'll take it up there and he'll make even more money on it. Originally, I was gonna try to sell the whole truck, but the motor is locked up completely and I think it's pretty rusted solid inside. So getting this truck running and driving again really wasn't a viable option. It's worth more to pull it apart. There we go, I got the rear end dropped out of it. I got most of everything up here cut that I can get from underneath. I have to cut the other running board, I forgot about it. I have to disconnect it from the fenders because it has some bolts up here. Then I got to set it down and I got to get the gear shifter out of it and a few other things I got to cut and then it should just lift right off of there. I went ahead and just dropped the rear end because there was so much stuff under here where they welded it all together so many times. Cutting that bed off of there would have been, would have been a nightmare deluxe. So I thought it was a whole lot easier just to drop the rear end out. Once I get the cab off, I'll cut the frame and then I'll just save the whole back half of it. Just be a whole lot easier that way. I gotta say, this Ford truck has probably been the biggest nightmare I've ever had as far as pulling a cabin clip off all as one unit. I've done a lot of these trucks of, of different trucks in different years, and I've never had one as difficult as this. It took me all day long, we finally got it done. I'm way, way, way behind schedule now, but it is what it is.
Okay, I got started on the second one. I got all of the cab bolts done. Actually, three of the cab bolts, all the bolts on the uh, passenger side were already gone, unbolted. It wasn't even wasn't even bolted down. But I had to cut all the ones on the driver's side. I got the uh, running board bolts cut. I got uh, most of the stuff under the hood cut. I still have to cut the steering column and pull the radiator out of it. Just a few more things, and then hopefully it'll lift off of there a little bit easier than the other one did. That was an absolute nightmare. But I am out of time today. I've got to get to Pratt, Kansas, the name of the town. Uh, I've been there before. That's where I picked up that old uh, five-window truck that had that smash hit grill guard on the front of it. Uh, there's another truck there that I bought from the same guy. I've got to go back and pick that up right now, so let's hit the road. We'll check out that Chevy Tanker truck here in just a second, but first, let's check out the Ford. You know, really, this truck here is pretty nice. I gotta say, I like the little easy steps that it has in it. My truck has those on all four corners, and that is the handiest little thing. Now, obviously, these old trucks weren't quite as tall as the newer trucks, but still, being able to have that little step to get in there, super handy. But really, like I say, this truck's in pretty good condition. The hood's in the back of it, so it's pretty much complete other than the engine, and the uh, passenger window is knocked out of it. But overall, I mean, if you look at it, it's got a few dents and scratches and scrapes and things like that, but it's just got a really good patina to it, if you can call it that. But uh, up in here, all the cab mounts look pretty solid. I think I did see one spot back here somewhere up underneath that had a little bit of rust in it. I don't remember exactly where it was at, but, you know, really, this truck's a very nice truck all things considered I mean if you were 60 years old sitting in a barn for the last 40 of those years <laughs> you might be a little bit rough yourself I think a good pressure wash would make this truck really shine and then it's gonna need some cleaning because if you look on the inside it's got a healthy rat nest in here it's even got a, a dead critter of some sort in there and I actually think there's multiple dead critters in there because I see one there and then I see a skull underneath it so <laughs> it's it's definitely seen better days as far as the interior goes but I actually when I look at this more I don't think this was a rat nest I'm pretty sure this is a raccoon nest or something like that just because a lot of this stuff is way too big for rats rats don't usually make nests out of stuff like this that looks more like something a coon would do and also I know that truck there was definitely a coon nest and not a rat nest inside of it so I'm guessing probably both of these had raccoons living in them there's even bones hanging out of the glove box over there <laughs> So it's, it's pretty gnarly inside. Guy's gonna have to put on a mask and clean it out. But uh, we'll worry about that later. This window is rolled down. Like I say, that window's broken out. So we'll let it air out for a while. Probably the worst spot of rust on this whole vehicle is right here by the back window. But I think a guy could patch that and do something to, to blend the paint to make it match the patina. Because, I mean, I'm not really a big person on patina, but this truck here, I think this is a good candidate to just go ahead and leave it all original.
Let's check out this tanker truck. This is a 1965, I think, five or six. I can't remember which it was now. It's got this big old platform up on the back of it. I thought that's pretty cool. That's actually the main reason why I bought this truck. Uh, for the price I gave for it, I probably wouldn't have paid that much normally, just because the cab on this thing is super rusty. Up above the windshield is completely rotted out. And then down in the bottom end of it, it's got quite a bit of rust as well. So really the cab on this is just junk. It does have a nose I can chop off of it for art, but the main reason why I wanted this truck is for this platform. I'm thinking this will make a pretty cool camping platform that I can set up a, a tent or I could set up a bed up there. I might even be able to build some sort of primitive structure up there. I don't really know what exactly what I'm going to do with it yet, but definitely that's going to go into my junkyard compound somewhere. And that's right, like I say, that's the main reason why I wanted this. Plus it's mobile because it's got tires on it so I can move it around. It does have a V8 in it. I'm not sure if this is a 283 or a 327. It's got the center dump manifolds, so I'm thinking it's probably a 327, which would be really cool, especially if it's the original 327 because 66 and older 327s are much better than the 67 and newer. There's two ways of telling on these what they are. Off of numbers, there's the casting numbers on the back of the block. Those are usually really hard to get to while the motor's still on the vehicle, but up here on this front pad, right up here in front of that head, there will be what's called a suffix code and that'll tell you whether it's a truck motor, car motor, what year it is, and what motor it is in the first place. I don't have anything to scrape it off with right now, so I'm not going to worry about that, but I'm pretty sure just by looking at it that this is going to be a 327, so I'll probably pull the motor out of it. I don't know if I'll cut the nose off of it or not, because if I cut the nose off, it may not look quite as good in my camp setup, so I'll probably just leave it complete. Like I say, I'll probably pull the motor out, sell that, but then I'll put the hood back on it and just leave the rest of it all together like it is. Everything is ready to go for tomorrow. I got this Jeep set out. This is a 401 under the hood of this. Pretty neat engine. You don't see those too often, really. I've got all the running boards cut off of these frame pieces ready to go. The bumpers are cut off ready to go. Both of the cabs are out back ready to go. He's going to be here sometime in the morning to get all that. In addition to that, I have another guy coming out tomorrow to get some more stuff that's over there in the barn. However, my Dodge truck's in the way and the battery is dead once again, so I'll have to bring some jumper cables out and get that moved. Today has been a really mixed day. There's been some really good things happen. There's been some not so good things happen. I got all the parts ordered for the loader that I need to fix it and get it back up in tip top shape. Fortunately, there was nothing super expensive, so it's all gonna be fairly cheap to replace. However, I did have one pretty bad thing happen today and uh, that's what happened. <laughs> I had the camera set up on the loader and I forgot it was there and I bumped it and it fell and the screen landed right on the iron steps and it just shattered the screen. It still works but I can't see the screen so I can't see exactly what's in frame. Kind of a bad deal. Fortunately I do have the GoPro subscription so I'll be able to replace that for a hundred bucks but I will not have a GoPro camera for two to three weeks so that's going to be unfortunate. I use this thing a ton. I get a ton of cool shots with this thing. And uh, I do have an older GoPro, but it likes to overheat on me and it's pretty warm out again. So I don't know, I'll figure all that out. I will see you guys in the morning. And now it's raining again. <laughs> I have a feeling today's gonna be a wet, miserable day. Well, last night, 20% chance of light rain turn into three inches of rain <laughs> so uh, it's a little bit wet out here we've got a lot to do today though so I don't have my water boots so I'm just gonna have to get wet socks and let's get it done one other thing is I broke out the old hero 9 uh, this camera kind of has a few issues I thought about getting rid of it but this is the camera that I started my channel with and I, I feel kind of sentimental about it so I keep hanging on to it but maybe one of these days I'll get rid of it but I'm glad I have it today because I'm gonna need it
headed to a new home. He also bought all these old light shades in this tin can. All headed out. It's definitely been quite the day. The Dodge would not start even with jumper cables. Finally swapped the battery out of Sean's truck into my truck. Got it and my trailer moved. Get all that done so we can get in the barn. And then the skid steer fires right up, it won't move. And I called the service department and they think the uh, park brake went bad. So the uh, sensor on it. So I had to just drag it out with chains. We got it out of there. Had to slide all the shelves out by hand, which is a lot of work, but we got it done. I want to hop in the truck now. We're going to head to the other yard, and the guy that we loaded those cabs in that Jeep on wants some more stuff over there. And next up, we're going to load all these up, stash them wherever we can stash them in these cabs. Bunches of wheels. I think there's 35 wheels here. There's some pretty cool ones. Got some Ford slots, some Kragers, some small slots, a bunch more Kragers, an old uh, GM grill. I think that's a Laguna Pontiac intake. The uh, box out there, that's a 69 Firebird dash pad. A set of pistons and some chromies. So, pretty neat stuff here. Oh, this in here is pretty neat. I had a pair of those that were slot wheels. That in there, I only had a single of it. We've had this stuff for years. We cleaned out a storage unit years ago, and I wish I would have been doing YouTube back then because that place was crazy. It was just, this isn't even a fraction of what we got out of that building. That thing was packed clear full of stuff. I mean, clear full is a massive building, too. A lot of good stuff came out of there for sure. But we're going to get all this loaded up. Like I say, we'll just stash it wherever we can fit it. I think it'll all fit in there pretty good if we pack it in there nice and tight. And there we go got it loaded up it is headed out to Kentucky there's the grill guard down there and then I had this cab as well back in the row he already bought that one quite a while back we just haven't ever had room to put it on a load so it's gone now too this other stuff was stuff he got somewhere else so just these two here were mine really cool truck I got to enjoy it for not even quite a week but I'm glad to see it go to a new home he'll take it he'll probably resell it to somebody else for more money yet so Making room, making progress. All right guys, lots of crazy stuff's been going on, but I just got a phone call and I've got to go check out another farm cleanup. I don't know exactly what's there. I don't think there's much good there. I think it's mostly scrap. I'm probably gonna have somebody else do the work. Probably have Todd Walker. You guys have seen him a little bit in my videos. Uh, he has roll offs and an excavator and skid steers and all that good stuff. So he can do all the work. But if there is anything good there, I'll be sure to bring that home. Probably won't bring it home today just because it's so muddy out there in the fields right now because of all the rain we just got in the last couple of days. But definitely before he goes in there and wads everything up with the excavator, I'll grab the good stuff out. Then after that, I've got to run back where I got that really cool 48 Chevy truck and that 64 Ford truck. There's another vehicle there I've got to pick up. I think you guys are going to like it. Huh? Not long, not. Some of these big ones over here are 22 foot long. Yeah, this will kind of be all up the top with his excavator and then Yeah. There's that dodge you bought. Yeah. Roll off and set it right here that I had in front of you. That's your dad. Yeah, that's your mom. He's getting all set up. I want to see this. Oh, there's the, there's the drag on this. <laughs> it was 
running one apart. <laughs> they must love it that Rabbit, Rabbits have uh, increased this year. Yeah, I, I've been seeing three of them since we've been here. But rabbits have increased this year. They was running when I parked them. I quit farming, I just, just quit. And good morning, we're back today. I got that ambulance home last night. I just took it home with me. I didn't want to come back out here late at night as the sun was setting. That's a pretty cool van. We will check that out later. And then next week, this loader is going in the shop. So I will not have it here. So I wanted to go ahead and get that motor off of this frame so I could stack this in the pile, get it out of the way. I do have good news. They got the skid steer working again. I guess it was the joystick, the one that controls it going forward and sideways and all that stuff. Uh, that joystick went bad, 133 hours. And somehow that joystick just faulted out and it was putting out too much current or something like that, it wasn't working properly and it automatically locks the park brake up. So they came out, worked on that, got that fixed, it's working good again. So that's definitely good. I was a little bit worried because once this is gone, if somebody wants to buy something, I have no way of loading it for however long this is gone. So now with the skid still working again, I'll at least be able to drag stuff around if I have to. This engine here is just going to Sean. They said it ran good. It was last tagged, I think 15 years ago. And it was parked in the barn, still turns good, had good clean antifreeze, good clean oil in it, so I'm sure it'll run again with minimal effort. I've also got this motor here. I got the front mounts cut, I just got to cut the transmission mount, but I'll worry about that later. This is small enough I can move it around with the skid steer. What I want to try to do now is get this stacked in the pile, and then I've got a few cars over there that have aluminum wheels, so I want to pop those wheels off and get those stacked in the pile. That way everything's done. That way, next week when I don't have a loader anymore, I won't have stuff in the way. And now we're going to check out the ambulance. And I know what you're thinking, Silas, you were just talking about how hot it is, and here you are wearing a coat. What in the world's going on? And uh, the trees look a little bit different. That's because I recorded the initial video back in late August, and right now it's late October. I was editing this video last night, and I realized that I didn't have any footage of this. My footage had gotten corrupted, and so I had to delete it. Luckily, I still have the ambulance. It is sold already, but the guy hasn't picked it up yet, so I'm able to come out here and show it to you guys. I don't know what I would have done if he would have picked it up already. That would have been bad. <laughs> I would have been asking him to go out and make some videos of it. But here it is. It's got the chrome grill on it. It was an old Turon EMS van. Turon's a little tiny town in between here and where I got the van, so it's lived most of its life all in the same area. It's a little on the rough side, it's got a little bit of a rat nest in it. it hasn't been started in quite a few years, but it does still uh, turn over. What my initial thought when I got this was, uh, I don't remember if this door opens or not. Nope. That's right, the side door doesn't open on this thing. What my initial thought was, is that I was going to make this into a, a camper, or something to camp out in out here, but a guy saw it and he really wanted it, so he bought it from me. I'm always happy to give vehicles a second chance at life. So he's gonna actually do something more with this than what I would have. But it's still got all the little cubbies in it. It's still got the, the little bench in it right here. Unfortunately, there was no gurney in it. I wish it would have had a gurney. I would have kept that if it did. Yeah, it needs a really, really good cleaning. It needs a little bit of work on the outside, a good pressure wash. It's got a chrome step on the back of it. Fancy. But yeah, a real good pressure wash would make this thing look a whole lot better. 
It does have a little bit of rust in it. You can kind of see here over the wheel wells and up in there, but that's not too bad, not too terrible. A little bit in the bottom of the doors, but once again, it's just all lip rust is what I call it. All very workable stuff. All the lights are still on it. I don't believe this one had a siren. It might, actually, now that I think about it, there might be a siren under this hood somewhere. Uh, I don't even see a place where a siren would go, so I don't think this one ever actually even had a siren on it. It's possible that there was a siren somewhere else that's gone now, could have disappeared through the years, but honestly, where this thing came from, it probably never needed a siren anyway. Tehran's a little tiny blip on the map, so uh, it probably wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah, it's hard telling. I doubt Tehran bought it new. It's possible that they bought it new, but it's just a neat van. I'm glad to see it going to a new home where somebody will actually do something with it. He really likes vans. He'll get it all washed up. He'll probably get it running. He may resell it. He may do something with it. I don't really know. He's supposed to be here sometime in the relatively near future to pick it up, and actually, he bought that red 60-whatever-it-was uh, Ford truck that was earlier in the video. Both of those are still here, so... He'll come get those at some point in time. All of these vehicles are sold. This is kind of my sold vehicle area. All those are sold, and then this old power wagon is sold as well. And then the square body is sold. And actually, now that I think about it, none of the rest of these are sold. So I guess some of this area is a sold vehicle area. Some of it's not. I, know, yeah, I need to go ahead and organize it a little bit better. Go ahead and move all this stuff out of here. And that way I can put all of my sold vehicles in one area. That way when somebody wants to come pick it up, they can come pick it up. Because right now, when somebody comes to pick something up, I've got to go dig it out wherever it's at. That'll be a good winter project. I got a lot of winter projects in my mind. We'll see how many of them I get to. But with that, we're going to go ahead and travel backwards in time a couple months and continue this video. There we go, we got a bunch done. I tried to do as much as humanly possible with the excavator, get a bunch of room, because that loader is really puking fluid now. It's getting worse and worse. I really need to quit driving it. Of course, today's the last day. I need to use it for about another hour, and then I'm done using it. I got all the lug nuts off to where I can just pick this truck up, shake the wheels off. I can stack all the cars over there. I had those motors laid up over there. They had converters on them. I was gonna unbolt them, but I don't have time for that right now, and I need the space open to put cars in. I went ahead and bulldozed all the tires out of the way as best I could. The guy that was supposed to be dismounting those for me, he came and hauled five or six hundred of them off, and uh, <laughs> I guess come to find out, he hasn't got any of those dismounted yet. So definitely not sending any more. So I just shoved them up over there out of the way. I've got plenty of room to stack cars in here now. Like I've mentioned before, I'd like to get to where I have about a hundred cars stacked in here because I can stack them up pretty high, and I can come all the way out to about here, and I can fill this whole area in. I just got to leave a road right through here open. And then I can bring the crusher in, and we can just park it right up front somewhere, and I can smash all these in a day or two, and then pull the crusher right back out. I don't ever want to get like it was the last time I had the crusher here, where I had where I had cars scattered all over the place, and I had to gather them all up. So I'd like to just process them, get them completely ready to go, and stack them over there. The Chrysler here, it has plastic covers over chrome wheels, so it's a double whammy. By the time I clean the wheels and everything, they're just not going to be worth enough, so I just left them on the car. This car here had a manifold converter. I was going to pop the motor out, but it's wrecked really hard in the front. It wasn't cooperating, and all of a sudden I snagged the converter, and the converter popped off. So I guess I don't have to pull the motor. There is some aluminum there, but for the amount of work it's going to take to get that out of this wrecked car, I'm just not going to worry about it. Leave it in there, get it done. And then this thing here had locking lug nuts on it. I was able to bust the wheels off kind of tore them up a little bit. I'll probably have to pull those tires off with a sawzall, but that's okay. So anyway, I'm going to hop in the loader now, go ahead and stack all four of these up there in the pile. I got, now that, now that those motors are gone there, I can take the pile on over there. I did get another Mitsubishi 3000 GT over there. 
I think it's a little bit older than the other one I had, but uh, I did a crushing video on the last one. Maybe we'll do something different with this one. That'll be a video for some future day. Right now, I just got to get this done. That way, I can get the loader ready to go for Monday. And then next week, we're going to get over to the other yard and start crushing again, I think. That's the plan. We'll see how it goes. There we go. It's looking pretty good out here. Those military tires there, they did not want to cooperate. I don't normally struggle that much moving stuff around with the loader, but I was really struggling with those. I really didn't even want those in the first place, but my buddy Skyler had them and he didn't know what to do with them and I went ahead and took them mainly as a favor. I, I don't deal with tires as much as I used to. Back in the day, they didn't care what you shoved in the cars and so I'd have people bring me tires like that all the time. I'd shove every car full, but I don't do that anymore. But here we go, getting quite the pile ready to go. Again, I think there's 10 or 11 vehicles in this pile now. So like I say, that back row, I might put one or two more cars up there on top. But then once I come out a row, I'll stack them as high as I can reach. I just didn't want to go that high on the very back row in case they fell over or something like that. But now that I've got that established, I'll just go up, up, and away. I probably won't be able to get 100 cars in this pile. I think I had 40 or 50 in this pile the last time and that was without smashing the roofs in. So I should be able to get 60 or 70 in here this time. I almost completely forgot that that Toyota had a secondary cat on the bottom side of the car. I'm glad I checked. It's good. I was able to reach up under there and fork it out of there. Wasn't that big of a deal. And that uh, Neon had a converter on it too. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't roll that one over. It was clear full of little stuff. Came from a mechanic shop. So I'll drive in here and grab those here in a minute. And then that blue square body that was sitting over there, I have that truck sold. He's actually trading me a 51 Ford, I think. I think it's a 51, 51 or two. Uh, it's a big truck, but there's no bed on it, but it's got a good looking nose on it. So we're just trading straight across. So I set that out. I won't have a loader here to do the work. So he's gonna roll the 51 off when he gets here and then roll that truck up onto his trailer. My mud pit's finally starting to dry out, but I can hear the thunder rolling in the background. So we might get some more rain. It's been raining off and on today. Just a little bit, enough to keep it nice and humid. But anyway, I'm about done for today. I checked the radar. There's a big old storm coming this way. I don't want to get soaking wet. Of course, I'm already soaking wet from the inside out, but I don't want to get rain on too. I got all my cameras and stuff with me. And as always, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day and remember to get out there and find an adventure. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs>